and Nvidia's DLSS 3 or frame generation. Why do people hate it? I'm not sure if you've uh, seen the comments on uh, Twitter or YouTube. A lot of people don't seem to have warmed up to the idea of uh, frame generation, uh, fake frames, uh, frame insertion, frame interpolation, whatever they want to call it. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, arguing the, the facts. Uh, sure, it is definitely uh, fake frames being inserted into the game to make the frame rate a little bit higher and that comes at the cost of input latency. But but is it really so bad? Today we'll be having a look at five games where I test the frame generation on and off. We'll even have a blind test in the middle and then we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive when it comes to Cyberpunk. Alright, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first game we are going to have a look at is Dying Light. Uh, on the left you'll see we'll have uh, no frame generation and on the right frame generation is enabled. Uh, these uh, settings or these videos have been recorded at 1440p on the highest uh, ray tracing preset that uh, we could find or that we could configure I should say. And uh, this is with uh, frame generation and DLSS super resolution set to quality. As you can see we're getting around 30 to 40% uh, higher frame rate with frame generation on and uh, pretty impressive uh, gains when it comes to the 1% and the 0.1% low numbers. Now I'm putting them side by side so you can see for yourself if you can spot any differences. Right then next up we've got uh, The Witcher 3. Now this game uh, struggles to hit uh, 60 frames per second on an RTX 4070 Ti. When ray tracing is enabled uh, even DLSS quality doesn't really help. You can see in this villager we're getting 60 frames per second on the left but we're getting 100 frames per second on the right with frame generation enabled. Now once again side by side views uh, see if you can spot the differences. I know that the gameplay is a little bit quick and uh, obviously the screen is cut in half but uh, if uh, during normal gameplay you really can't spot the difference then I'm really not sure why you would not enable it if you've got the option to. Now this is going to be a blind test with the Cyberpunk uh, built-in benchmark. I'm not going to be telling you which one is which but uh, one has got uh, frame generation enabled and the other does not. Uh, both the uh, settings are exactly the same. DLSS quality for 1440p on the RT Ultra preset with the Psycho lighting and uh, I'm just going to keep quiet let's see if you can spot the difference. Right, and here you can see that uh, both games actually use the same settings. So one just had uh, frame generation enabled, and uh, the one on the left is the one with frame generation, obviously. And uh, actually, our minimum frames per second on the left was actually our average frames per second on the right. So frame generation definitely helped us here quite a lot. Right, so now we're going to be doing a little bit of a deeper dive into uh, DLSS 2 super resolution and DLSS 3 frame generation. Now, there seems to be quite a bit of confusion out there. Uh, some people believe that uh, DLSS uh, 2 or super resolution does not actually reduce input latency, right? So if you have a look at the top right hand corner there, I hope you can see it this time, uh, it's probably the third time I'm recording this, but you can see that we've got a, an FPS counter there and average PC latency. Now I'm not sure how to make that more visible, but uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, our average PC latency is sitting around 55, 60 milliseconds at the moment and our uh, frame rate is sitting in the mid 30s right this is on the rt ultra preset with uh, psycho ray tracing enabled i'm just going to uh, open up uh, msi afterburner as well so you can see what's happening just don't mind the gpu temperature some things are not 100 percent right there uh, i think uh, airflow in my case is a bit restricted but uh, i'll fix that anyway so you can see that that uh, 
at 1440p, no DLSS, no frame generation, no nothing. We're getting around 35 frames per second, which is obviously not ideal. Uh, I think that this is a, a 3090 type of performance card, right? It's quite expensive and uh, you'd expect a bit more. But uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, the system latency actually does go down. Now, uh, if you aren't sure what the PC latency or system latency in this regard means, that's basically the time it takes for your mouse click to register on screen, right? So if I click or move my mouse, that's the time it takes before that image is actually presented on the screen, right? So we're sitting at 60 milliseconds. Let's just uh, enable DLSS super resolution here, no frame generation. I'm just going to go down to quality. Uh, we should get around 60 frames per second, I hope. Uh, let's just reset our numbers here. And uh, let's just give it some time. And there you can see our average PC latency reduced from around 55, 60 milliseconds to 42 milliseconds, right? So your input latency does definitely uh, reduce or decrease uh, when you enable DLSS super resolution. Now that's uh, definitely understandable. That's how it should work because your frame rate goes higher and uh, therefore the time it takes for your PC to render the frame and display it on screen is reduced and uh, that uh, equals a reduction in input latency now frame generation works a bit differently frame generation inserts fake frames so even though the frame rate goes higher you do not see that decrease in system latency right i'm just going to uh, we're getting around 60 frames per second as you can see i'm just going to enable frame generation we are having around 40 millisecond of uh, input latency or pc latency whatever they call it let's just enable frame generation and uh, you'll see that uh, super resolution goes to auto you click apply it goes back to auto again so let's just force quality and uh, let's just reset our numbers and now you can see we are back into that uh, mid 50s range when it comes to system latency right it's not the the end of the world uh, this is not an online multiplayer competitive shooter the mouse movement still feels uh, pretty good uh, even though it increased by about uh, 15 millisecond i mean it's uh, definitely not going to make you a much worse player well it definitely does not affect my gameplay but that's just because i'm a pretty bad player as it is but as you can see we are now getting around uh, 90 frames per second i'm recording this specific video using uh, obs because otherwise my performance overlay there in the top right hand corner does not show so there is about a 10 percent uh, performance in right so i'm just going to drive around a little bit uh, this is now with the dlss and uh, frame generation enabled and i just want you to see if you can spot any artifacting anything out of the ordinary uh, i certainly can't i actually have to pixel peep to see differences between the frame generation on and off uh, to, to some of you you might be a little bit more eagle-eyed you might uh, notice these differences i'm not sure but uh, i'm going to be playing around uh, this is uh, how you should be doing it right during gameplay not uh, freeze frame uh, pixel peep set the playback to 10 percent so you can spot these anomalies uh, more easily it's uh, really during gameplay it's very very difficult to see that there are any differences right so you can actually see that uh, our hud elements are pretty accurate as well moving around you can see my quest marker there and uh, previously before the last patch uh, those quest markers would actually disappear behind buildings but you can see that it is pretty consistent now there are still some games where the hide elements are affected when you enable dlss frame generation uh, spider-man used to be like that i'm not entirely sure if that's fixed i couldn't really pick it up uh, lately but i know flight simulator still has uh, some issues with hard elements especially if you are in the cockpit view Right, uh, so this was just me driving around a bit. Uh, you can see that uh, we're getting around 100 frames per second. This is on the RT Ultra preset with cycle lighting. Uh, usually you get uh, a little bit more frames. Uh, it's just the OBS is uh, uh, taking up some system resources here. I just actually wanted to give you some full screen gameplay so you can see for yourself. All right, uh, that's going to be it for Cyberpunk. Let's move on to the next one.
All right, next up we have uh, Spider-Man Remastered for PC. Uh, obviously, we have a 12700K CPU in here, and you can see even at uh, these settings, so this is once again the Ray Tracing Ultra preset, everything set to its highest quality, 1440p. Uh, we are CPU bound in certain scenarios, but uh, frame generation actually helps us quite a lot, as well as we are getting more or less double our frame rate. Now, uh, without uh, frame generation, we're getting around 80 frames per second average and uh, that uh, goes up to around 150 frames per second with frame generation enabled now spider-man actually had some issues with its uh, hard elements i couldn't really capture it in this video but hardware unboxed actually did a very good video on that uh, capturing all those issues but uh, let's move on to hogwarts legacy now this one i'm pretty sure you guys are tired of uh, seeing this exact same benchmark run but uh, with ray tracing enabled in this game we are getting around uh, 68 frames per second right uh, now this is not uh, full gameplay i mean this just gives you an idea but uh, moving in and out of the castle uh, in this uh, ground here uh, you can see that the frame rate actually does drop below 60 frames per second as well whereas on the right with frame generation enabled we are well basically maintaining 100 frames per second it does dip every now and again you can see that the frame generation actually helps a bit with stuttering as well as our one percent low numbers are a little bit higher with frame generation enabled all right so uh, i'm going to finish this video off with uh, hitman 3 once again we are running everything at its highest possible settings at 1440p ray tracing is set to ultra everything is set to ultra i'm trying to replicate this run as best as i can i chose this exact scene because uh, of ray trace reflections uh, there's quite a lot of uh, glass and re reflective surfaces here so this gives us a pretty good idea so even though we didn't really double our frame rate we gained around uh, between 40 and 45 percent by enabling frame generation and once again the uh, visual quality seems to be pretty much the same between uh, frame generation enabled and uh, disabled so uh, my personal opinion is if you do have access to the technology uh, definitely use frame generation unless you are playing uh, multiplayer online uh, competitive shooters uh, there's no real support for dlss3 just yet in those titles so those uh, that shouldn't be an issue anyway uh, so just use uh, frame generation you won't regret it it's a great tech uh, i'm not an nvidia shell i don't get paid for any of these videos this is just my opinion based on my experience all right uh, thank you guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one